What's going on YouTube? So the Honda Odyssey has long been one of the most important minivans out there. And today we're with the latest 2024 model. And not just any 2024 model, this is the newest sport trim level, which combines a lot of style with also a lot of value. So is this still one of the best minivans you can buy for the 2024 model year? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so let's start things off here under the hood for our spec dump. Now the sport trim level of the Odyssey doesn't have a different powertrain from the rest of the model. So that means all Odysseys will continue on with the tried true and reliable 3.5 liter V6 engine. It's making 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. You have a 10 speed automatic. Front wheel drive is your only drivetrain option. And as far as fuel economy, you're rated at 22 miles a gallon combined. Now, of course, later on in this video, we're going to go out for a drive. And I bet you also want to know how quiet it is for the whole family so you don't wake them up. And we're going to get a sound level reading to prove just that. Um, and you can compare them on carconfections.com. But first, let's close up the hood and take a look at the exterior design. So last year, Honda got rid of the LX trim and they added this sport trim level, which is right in the middle of the lineup of Odysseys. Now, what do you get with the sport trim level? Well, you're gonna get that more aggressive look as you'd expect. The front grille here is going to be finished in the full gloss black. So you'll notice that it gives it a more aggressive look, especially when paired with this white color. Uh, you can also get a gray, sonic gray pearl, excuse me, on this model for a more interesting look as well. Now coming to our headlights, full LED headlights on all versions of the Odyssey. You also have a daytime running light and a turn signal indicator down here at the bottom. This part is going to be incandescent, but the standard LED fog lights will be LED. Now, as I look at the rear design, you might mistake this for a Civic Type R from a distance because yeah. it is aggressive. Yeah, we have a spoiler. We <laughs> also have some black accenting here on the Sport model. Uh, additionally, let's check out our taillights because I do believe they have a nice smoked finish here on the Sport model, but let's see if all three elements are LED because that's something we do in all of our reviews. So we have incandescent brake light, incandescent reverse light, and incandescent turn signal indicator. Unfortunately, none of the elements are LED on the Odyssey's taillights, regardless of what trim level you choose. Now dropping down to this lower area, of course, no exposed exhaust outlets. As far as the tow rating though, you're looking at 3,500 pounds on all models. Now, one of the nice things that adds a lot of value to the Sport package is the fact that this model comes standard with 19-inch alloy wheels instead of the standard 18-inch alloy wheels. As you can see, full gloss black finish, just like the other elements on the exterior, and I think it looks really good. You'll also notice the same gloss black finish up here on the mirrors. Now, as far as the mirrors themselves, standard blind spot monitoring is standard heating on all trim levels. If you want auto dimming or power folding, though, you will have to choose the highest end Elite. Now here at the side, of course, the typical minivan proportions do take place. Of course, you also have the sliding rear doors. And as far as the overall length is concerned, it's 205.2 inches long, which is longer than the Honda Pilot, if that's something you're cross shopping this with. Now, if you're wondering if this is still a good buy this year, I will say that when it comes to safety systems, Honda has you covered for when the kids inevitably start throwing hands and you have to lean back there and smack them a little bit. Honda does have you covered in that regard because you have all four of your active safety features as standard equipment on this Odyssey. And that's across every single trim level. But guys, that wraps up the exterior design. But before, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now let's move on to the interior first. Of course, we'll take a look at our key fob, typical Honda key fob. You do have additional buttons though, because you can control the power sliding doors. I also want to point out you have standard smart entry and standard remote start. Now to get inside, grab behind the handle, that'll unlock the door. And then take a look inside the interior. So there's not a lot different when it comes to the sport trim level. And let's talk about, you know, overall material color options and selections. 
Cloth seating will be on just the base EX. Everything else will come with real leather seating. When it comes to the sport trim, black is your only color choice, but you do have a unique red stitch option to kind of distinguish it a little bit. Overall, these seats are very plush and super comfortable. They're always going to be 12-way power adjusting on every single model, and all but the base model will come with two-person memory seating as well. But let's go ahead and climb inside. Now that we're inside, let's look at the rest of the cabin materials. We have a nice plush leather covered armrest through here. It's going to be hard touch on the middle and soft touch along the top. As you go to the upper dash, all this is finished in kind of a leatherette material with a stitching detail. We have a faux aluminum here on the sport trim level, and we have a nice soft touch plastic through the center sections. But we'll go ahead and fire it up with our standard push button start. Now I went ahead and transitioned to a first person perspective for a little closer look at some of the individual elements. Um, first up, we have our gauge cluster. This is a uh, mostly digital setup. You have approximately seven inch display right there in the middle. You can change a few elements of the overall design. You also have rain sense wipers if you choose the elite trim level. As we pull back to the steering wheel, uh, pretty much every trim is going to come with this nice leather wrap steering wheel. You have manual tilt and telescoping abilities. It will be heated on the top end elite version as well. But let's go ahead and check interior storage because it's very crucial to make sure you have enough space for all your parenting essentials such as bottles, diaper bags, Xanax, all those things you're going to need. And we'll check the center console first. So we've been doing a thing called the Car Confections Donut Test because our emblem is of course a donut. And inside of this, we can fit not only the full dozen, but we have space to spare. I believe we have the space to fit 16. All of our donuts haven't came in yet, but I'm declaring this space for 16 donuts, which is very, very good. And up in front of that, we have a spot that would be a wireless phone charging pad on the top model. And then, of course, because this is a van, we have the central space completely um, open. So you can stick anything you're going to need right there into that area. And you've got a couple connections in front of that. Now your shifter is going to be located up here out of the way. It is the kind of typical Honda push button style. D is for drive. You actually can go into a sport mode and shift manually if you want to for some reason. R of course is for reverse. And when you go into reverse, you're going to find this traditional backup camera on board. You can change between a couple different views. Uh, just be aware that there's no 360 camera on any model, even the top end trim level. This model does not have parking sensors. You will have to go up one more rung to get those. P is for park and you have a electronic parking brake. Now right next to the shifter, you will notice your button for your three stage heated seats. If you want ventilated seats, that's only on the top end elite, but all the trim levels will come standard with the three zone automatic climate you see here. Obviously you can adjust all three zones in sync or you can do them individually and everything is a physical button, which I like. Another physical button right above that is your volume knob. So as far as the audio systems, most models are just going to have seven speakers. The top end model will have an 11 speaker, 550 watt system instead. But let's give this standard system a sample right now. So overall sound quality is decent. Obviously audio is not a big focus usually in a minivan. All right, so let's talk about the display here. So this is the eight inch display. This is basically the same as what we've seen in the Odyssey for many years at this point. Uh, you've got this Honda Link system with the tiled setup. You are gonna have uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay both on board, but it is a wired connection. Um, as far as navigation, you can get that, but you're going to have to choose the Touring or the Elite trim level. Now, there are some, of course, minivan exclusive features. These are, again, mostly reserved for the Touring and Elite, including the uh, cabin watch camera system where you can actually kind of spy on your kids. That's pretty cool, uh, but it's not going to be on this sport trim level. Now, coming above here, Auto Dimming Mirror with Homelink remotes is going to be included on all but the base model. And then also on all but the base model is this standard size sunroof. So as you can see, it does open up. It has a sunshade and a wind buffer. 
But minivans are all about the rear seat area. So let's go ahead and dive into what you get back here. Now, I do want to point out power rear doors are a standard feature on every version of the Odyssey. So you don't have to worry about uh, sliding your own door shut and you can do it up from the front as well. As far as the space is concerned, we're sitting at 41 inches of leg room, about 39 and a half inches of headroom, which does make it larger than the Han or Chrysler Pacifica. And I did bring my bendy ruler because we want to test those measures out here at Car Confections. And we're looking at about eight inches of knee space. I'm five foot nine and the seat is adjusted to Drew who's five foot eight. Additionally, my feet can slide up underneath of the seat and we can go ahead and slide the seat forward and back as well as recline a very good distance. So hopefully if you're lucky, maybe your kids will fall asleep and they won't be annoying you here from the back seat. Now, I do wanna talk about your different seating configurations though, because as you can see, this is you know a middle seat installed right here for maximum amount of passengers. You can also uh, fold this down. That allows for a lot of uh, a big armrest and three cup holders plus a little storage tray for maybe for a booger collection. But this seat can actually be completely removed in the Odyssey and you can take it completely out. And when you do that, it gives you the option of sliding the seats. They call it magic slide side by side. So not only can you slide them forward and back, you can also slide them side by side, which is very unique. Now let's go ahead and dive into some of the luxury goodies that you're gonna get in the Odyssey. So here in the center, we do have two cup holders. If the three wasn't enough right here, you do also have two charging USB ports. It's worth noting, you do have to get the touring or elite trim levels if you want the rear seat entertainment system. Now, while we're up here, I do want to talk about this. You have your climate controls. They're integrated here on the right side. So put your favorite kid on the right side uh, and they'll have the temperature adjustment. You do also have vents integrated in the B pillar as well. And let's also check out the third row and see where it lands on the Car Confections third row scale. So in order to get back here, of course, is a minivan. So you know they've made it nice and easy. You just grab this little lever right there. That actually slides the seat completely out of the way. You can also slide it side to side if, of course, you didn't have that middle seat installed. And getting back here in the Odyssey's third row. Let me go ahead and adjust my headrest there. Wow. We are looking at a very nice third row. As far as the official specs on this, it's 38 inches of leg room and 38 inches of headroom. So lots of space. Um, as you can see, like I said, I'm five foot nine and this is actually with the seat adjusted all the way back. We are still looking at about three inches of additional knee room and my feet can also slide up underneath the seat. The thigh support is absolutely fantastic as well. These seats are very comfortable, I will point out, and you do have three seats here in the third row. Now, as far as features are concerned, unlike some of the rivals, no third row window sunshades here on this sport model, uh, but you do get standard second row uh, sunshades on all Odyssey models. Dropping down below that, we have a 12 volt outlet. We do have vents integrated right here, two more cup holders. Um, so overall, how this lands on the Car Confections third row scale, this would have to be fit for a king. This is just about as good as what you get in the second row. It is so spacious and so comfortable. And let's see how much crap you can bring along with you on your Florida road trips. Now, as far as uh, the tailgate area itself is concerned, uh, you do have a power tailgate on EXL trim levels and above. Elite will also add the hands-free ability as well. Now let's talk about the amount of space you're going to get in this Odyssey's cargo area because it is going to be an absolute ton of space. We're sitting at 33 cubic feet behind the third row as a max or eight at behind the second row, excuse me, is 89 cubic feet. And as a maximum, you're looking at about 145 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Now it goes without saying that is vastly more than a Honda Pilot if that's something you're cross shopping with. It's also going to be more than a lot of the other uh, minivan rivals including the Toyota Sienna. Now let's talk about some of the uh, space figure or some of the functionalities back here. So we do have little storage cubbies here on the left side and let's go ahead and show you how to fold the third row seats. They have made it very easy. You just locate this little strap here, you pull back and that's going to allow the seats to just completely basically sandwich up and go into the floor, which is really a very uh, cool feature that we see really only on minivans. And that does also make for a completely flat loading floor right through here. So, so much space, guys. Now, it is worth noting there are no handles here in the um, cargo area to fold the second row, but I can just easily go up there and start to fold those down. 
and I went ahead and folded those seats down and as you can see um, unless you fully remove the seats it's not going to be a flat loading floor as you would expect but I'm still going to get my measurement because here at Car Confections we want to get those measures for you see if I can keep my ruler erect this is going to be a quite a challenge here um, from the driver's seat back to the rear of the cargo area we are sitting at 92 inches of length in this odyssey and let's see how long it is or how wide it is we are sitting at 48 inches wide so 92 by 48 is the cargo capacity dimensions in this uh, odyssey with the seat adjusted to someone who's five foot eight very impressive figures guys you're going to be able to fit a bunch of crap in this odyssey well guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 2024 Honda Odyssey, and in this test drive, we'll talk about a lot of different things, including getting our sound level reading. But first, let's go ahead and start with the heart acceleration. Nice. So there we are accelerating up a pretty steep incline, and as you can see, we really have plenty of power on board. Thankfully, that's one thing that Honda, you know, isn't messing with success, you could say. A lot of people really love the smooth and refined V6 engine that this has. That's right, it continues with the 3.5 liter V6 that we mentioned earlier. 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. Now, obviously, um, a lot of you guys are going to be very familiar with the rivals, right? So the Sienna is hybrid exclusive. That's kind of a distinguishing feature between these two. With that Sienna, you're gonna have a four cylinder hybrid system and it's not gonna have as much power as this. Yeah, and I just really think one of the biggest differences is that level of refinement. When we compare to something like the Sienna, this V6 just has such a smooth and buttery uh, delivery that is just not present on the Sienna. So that's something that we certainly want to point out is a big difference between these two. As we accelerate up to speed here, let's talk about another aspect of the powertrain. That is the 10 speed automatic transmission. This is a nice and smooth transmission. Yeah. Um, Honda really did a good job with this transmission. They use it in a few of their products and it is, of course, their own in-house developed transmission. And they, like I said, did a great job with this. Really smooth. It doesn't seem like unsure about the gears that it's in. And when you put your foot down, you are gonna get that downshift and get that extra power very quickly. Yeah, and as far as how it's put to the ground, I did mention this at the spec dump, but this vehicle is front wheel drive only, which is indeed another one of those big differences between this Odyssey and the Sienna, as well as some of the other competitors, is that it does not offer all wheel drive. So if you're looking for that, you will have to go elsewhere. And as far as other numbers, fuel economy is rated at 22 miles a gallon combined, which is not bad fuel economy for a V6 in this segment. Um, it is going to be less than the Sienna though, so do keep that in mind. Of course, the uh, Sienna and Pacifica have the hybrid variants that you can get better efficiency out of your minivan if that's what you're looking mostly for. Uh, but not bad fuel economy for a V6 and you'll see the auto start stop is pretty smooth. Yeah, they did yeah. a really good job with this. You don't hardly feel it. Of course, if you're still bothered by it, you can turn it off with this button. And now let's do our air ball and slam dunk. I'll have Drew kick us off with the slam dunk. Today we're going to say the slam dunk is the value of this sport trim level. This, just looking at it, you would think it was a fully loaded model. And once you're inside the cabin, I really don't feel like you're sacrificing much at all from that top end elite trim level. That being said, you'll see in just a little bit, this has a very appealing price point. Yeah. We're in the low $40,000 range, which seems like a spectacular deal considering that we just recently drove a Sienna that was $58,000. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot, a lot of money uh, for that fully loaded one. And they're hard to come across too, from what I hear. Now, as far as the air ball is concerned, I'd say it would have to be the uh, fuel economy. Yes, you get the smooth V6, but they're not offering any type of hybridization at all. Um, no plug-in hybrid, no traditional hybrid. So you're just gonna be spending quite a bit more at the pump when you're comparing it to that main rival this to the Sienna. Or the Pacifica plug-in. Or plug -in. the Pacifica plug-in, even more so, I suppose. Right. And we're gonna go ahead and speed up to 55 miles an hour so we can get our sound level reading. We 
we've officially settled in at 58.9 decibels uh, going 55 miles an hour which is a good sound level reading but let's go ahead and see how it compares to some of the rivals on carconfections.com and once I go and sort through all of the competitive vehicles with this Odyssey, uh, we do find out that that is actually uh, the loudest option in the segment. Um, now, do keep in mind, there aren't very many minivans in the segment, uh, but both of the Odysseys that we tested came in as the loudest. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, you will get quieter cabins with some of the other rivals. Now, I do also want to talk about your ride quality with this Odyssey because my oh my, it is so, so good. Um, as you would expect with a minivan, they just really focus on the ride quality. When you hit a bump, it doesn't make hardly any penetration into the cabin. These seats front and back and third row are really comfortable. Mm -hmm. it's no complaints. It's just so good. This is the type of vehicle that's going to melt the miles away, whether you're the person in the driver's seat or any of the other seats. And the last thing to mention here would be your Honda warranty. Three year, 36,000 mile basic, five year, 60,000 mile powertrain. Additionally, Honda does throw in two years and 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. And finally, let's talk prices for this 2024 Odyssey. So this year, prices rise around $500 on all the trim levels. Of course, they didn't change much when it comes to 2024 updates, so you wouldn't expect much of a price increase. That means we're going to start at $37,840 for an EX trim level. Sport's going to be $41,860. And then, of course, the Elite model is a little under $50,000. Now, if you want one like what we have today, uh, this is the Sport with the optional paint color. Uh, plus the destination, we're sitting around $43,500 as equipped. And that's it for our in-depth review of the 2024 Honda Odyssey Sport. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you're going to get access to a lot more automotive content, and I'm sure you won't want to miss out on a lot of content in the minivan sector as well as family three rows that you will be interested in. If you're already a fan and subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support because you do make this all possible. And if you haven't had the chance to follow us on TikTok and Instagram, we would appreciate a follow there as well as a visit to our website, carconfections.com. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.